Good afternoon, everyone, um, from wherever you are joining us. This is the Commonwealth Business Women Network in Kenya's weekly webinars that we host every Wednesday from 1 p.m. We're very, very delighted to see all the participants here on Zoom, as well as on Facebook Live. It's going to be a very, very exciting discussion. So as per the norm, we are going to start off with a short word of prayer. And let me invite Mwini to lead us in that. Mwini Karibusana. Thank you very much, uh, Susan, for inviting me. Yes. Father, we come before you, asking 
and the blessing of this part of Quran is good, we will be able to open our minds and having a conversation with the Prophet of the Prophet in the mouth of the Quran. Amen. Thank you so much, Mwini, for that. And once again, welcome everyone joining us from, um, from the two platforms I've mentioned, either on Zoom or on Facebook. Now, in March of this year, um, we had a very, very exciting topic, um, which was titled Exporting No Before You Go. So what we did is that at that time, we were looking at um, trade, and especially because most of our members have been asking for discussions on the same, since trade is quite crucial to the Commonwealth Business Women Network. So today we are actually going to jump into a second part of the same subject, which is trade. And today we are focusing more on clearing and forwarding, especially to members who, are, who want to be expert ready. We, want, we all want to be familiar with all the processes we all want to be familiar with the laws, the rules, the regulations, especially when it comes to international trade. And today we are going to learn all about that. I mean, normally we know that there are clearing and forwarding agents present. I mean, there are so many companies, including our guest speaker this afternoon who has her own company, but it's also good as an entrepreneur to be just familiar with, uh, with all those processes as you continue to trade internationally. So before we get into all that, um, as mentioned, this is hosted by the Commonwealth Business Women Network in Kenya. And to tell us a bit about the organization and also to give the welcome remarks, I would like to introduce our chairperson, who is also the Chief Operations Officer for the Commonwealth Business Women Network International. And this is none other than Nana Wanjao. Nana Karibusana. Thank you, Susan. And you do look lovely. <laughs> Thank you. You too. We are marching today. <laughs> I, ho I hope you can hear me well. Yes, yes, we can. Oh, fantastic. Fantastic. Um, I am going to echo Susan's uh, comments, sentiments of uh, welcome. And we will say Karibu, Karibu Sana to Commonwealth Business Women Network Kenya, where we welcome you by saying Jumbo. And we continue to encourage one another to still social distance, wash hands frequently, and let's keep wearing those masks. This is our favorite day of the week. I suggest you diarize it every Wednesday at 1 p.m. East African time. We come here where our guests are professionals, they are experts, they are captains of industry, they are thought leaders, they are policy makers, and much, much more. They come here to share ideas and ideals, to share knowledge. They nourish us, they educate us, they remind us because sometimes we tend to forget. And they even challenge us and provoke us beyond our comfort zone. So as I said, this is a space where you want to diarize and block that hour of every Wednesday, 1 p.m. East African time. Who are we as Commonwealth Business Women Network Kenya? We are a ground partner of Commonwealth Business Women Network, CBWN. CBWN was originally established by the Commonwealth Secretary and the Commonwealth Business Council in 2002. CBWN is now an accredited organization and community company directly recognized by 54 governments across six continents. We are committed to advancing the UN Sustainable Development Goal number five and the Commonwealth Charter. CBWN, we are focused on encouraging, enabling, and embedding women in leadership and women's economic empowerment through what we call our three T's of talent, training, and trade. This has been 
a busy, busy few weeks as we lead to the inaugural of the Commonwealth Women Entrepreneurship Summit launched today. And I want to share a little bit about the summit so that you don't miss the rest of it. It's a two day summit. The Commonwealth Women Entrepreneur Summit that was launched today kicked us off with a message of support from Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth, who is the head of the Commonwealth. She commended the focus and scale of the Commonwealth Women Entrepreneurship Summit. The summit will also be live streamed on YouTube with auto automatic play which means you can watch anytime, you can rewind if you missed any sessions. And it will also be on the internet radio via Bloomberry Radio. At the last physical women affairs ministers meeting in Nairobi, September 2019, the 12th one, ministers made clear their concern at the continued lack of women's voices and agency in Commonwealth meetings on business, trade, and investment. Last December, the G20 said, there is a missed opportunity to tackle the gap that needs immediate action, which is the presentation of women in emerging fields. The inaugural Commonwealth Women Entrepreneurs Summit that launched this morning for two days, so 19th and 20th May, has begun to change that in not only being the first global conversation about women in emerging tech, but the biggest Commonwealth business event involving women with 1,100 plus registrations from over 70 uh, countries involving 50 speakers in 12 sessions over two days and Kenya is well represented in these two-day uh, panels so as you can hear you have only missed the opening there is still much much more because it's running the whole day today and tomorrow the Commonwealth Women Entrepreneur Summit is also a great example of partnership in action with sessions curated in fintech, edtech, fashion tech. By the way, fashion tech, we are represented by Sheena Frida, executive board member of the Kenya Fash at the Kenya Fashion Council. And uh, health tech, of course, Dr. Josephine Odiambo is representing us well right there, amongst others, including policy uh, sessions, uh, meetings with the International Trade Center and ITU. There are 20 by 20 talks, which are on demand, leading voice of leading voices and thought leaders from around the world. There are heroin stories. What am I trying to say? There is so, so much more for the two days. Catch your breath and go onto the YouTube and just get your link and you can catch up from the beginning. Now, to top it all, the summit also sees the first Commonwealth e-marketplace, proudly an initiative of Commonwealth Business Women Network Kenya, developed by women for women at the height of pandemic last year, 2020. Currently, the e-market is hosting a business network expanding across four continents, showcasing 65 categories of products and still growing. The e-marketplace is a free platform that allows women to connect, collaborate and do commerce. The Commonwealth e-marketplace highlights the resilience and resourcefulness of women across the Commonwealth, especially in challenging times. Our vision as Commonwealth Business Women Network Kenya is to provide a platform for Kenyan business women to connect, collaborate and do commerce with the 1 billion women in the larger Commonwealth network for leadership and economic empowerment. This is a network available to us. We must take advantage of it.
Our mission is to strengthen the Commonwealth, build businesses, and advance women through what I already said, our three T's of talent, training, and trade. We believe that talent meets trade through training. Talent meets trade through training. So if you are not a member of Commonwealth Business Women Network Kenya, I suggest you register today www.cbwnkenya.org Susan, I am so grateful of our speaker today and our topic, the role of clearing and forwarding in international trade. Our membership, all our exhibitors on the e-market platform are already doing international trade already having conversations some at the beginning some advanced so this is a conversation that is going to be recorded and it will be watched over and over again because it's really at the center of what the e-market is all about thank you susan and tim back to you Thank you so much, Nana, for those remarks. And definitely, yeah, we, we need more members. And they need the Common All Business Women Network in Kenya. Too many things happening, very, very exciting things and very progressive ones. So join in. We'll continue to, I know what's the right term, not hunt you, but we shall be looking for you. Yes. OK. <laughs> invite. So, continue invite. to them our offering and invite them. <laughs> Exactly. I, that one was just not coming in. All right. So moving on with our program, I would like to invite another member of the Programs and Trainings Committee at the Commonwealth Business Women Network in Kenya, who's going to officially introduce us to our guest and invite her to start the presentation. Let me welcome Rose Ginja. Rose Caribou. Hello, everyone. And uh, thank you, Susan, for, that, for the invite. Thanks also to the chair lady for always giving such a wonderful introduction to this organization. Um, I'm quite happy with my role today, uh, especially to you, Saum, to invite you to, and to introduce you to make the talk, today's talk. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, if we have any gentlemen, sometimes we do. Wherever you are sitting at, I would like to introduce you to Saum. Saum is the current managing director to three SMEs. That is Duke, Duke Stop Freight Logistics Limited, started in 2016. Teleflex Medical Technologies, started in 2018 and Stacia Enterprises Limited started in 2018. Prior to that, some worked for various companies such as Elris Communications and, oh sorry, as Procurement and Logistics Officer, PKF East Africa as Supply Chain Consultant, Balri Africa Logistics, as a logistics coordinator and cube movers as the commercial manager. Before taking the big leap into self employment world, over which she currently demonstrates in the overall running of the business, of which logistics is her biggest strength because she is passionate about logistics, something she stumbled on when she started working in. Uh, Susan, I think we lost uh, 
rows. Hello, Susan. Mweni, are you there? Hello, sorry, sorry, I was muted. Okay, we, we yes. lost Susan. She started a uh, network interference. Yes. Oh, can you you can hear me now? Yes. Excellent. Okay, I'll just read on um, the rest of um, our guest, um, the, her profile, the rest of her profile. And um, so over the years, Saum has developed strong leadership and entrepreneurship skills, which she currently demonstrates in the overall running of the businesses, of which logistics is her biggest strength, because she is very passionate about logistics, something she stumbled upon when she started working in 2003. Saum earned a BA degree from Moy University Eldoret and business management diploma from the Kenya Institute of Management. And she is a member of the Chartered Institute of Purchasing and Supplies. Besides her work, she is very, very passionate about making a difference in society, having grown up in a very humble background in Kitale, and she understands what poverty really is. She has been a member of Rotary International for the past nine years, and her club is the Rotary Club of Harlingham, Nairobi, where she volunteers her time, her skills, and other resources to serve humanity on a daily basis. She has served as the club secretary, as a president, assistant governor, and she is currently the country chair for Kenya. Saum sits in boards of other community service organizations, including Hopeful Dawn and Hope for Women and Children in Rural Africa, mainly focused on women empowerment because she believes that if you help one woman out of poverty, she will help others and the world will be a much better place. So what inspires her to do the community service is because it enables her to live a purpose-driven life by making a difference wherever she goes. And she believes it is our responsibility to leave the world a better place than we found it. And in addition to all that, and last but not least, she enjoys reading, traveling, cooking, hiking, and she loves rock music. So yes, Saum, we are very, very happy to have you this afternoon. And we cannot wait to hear what we're going to learn today when it comes to clearing and forwarding. So Karibu Sana. Uh, thank you very much. Good day, everybody. I hope you're all keeping well, keeping safe, and uh, just getting on well with life. I want to first appreciate uh, the Commonwealth Business Network for the opportunity to learn every Wednesday. I really look forward to my Wednesday noons because I once received an email from you and after that I blocked all my Wednesday lunchtime just to come and listen, ask questions and I've learned a lot and I really appreciate this. And uh, most of today I appreciate the opportunity to share what I know about uh, clearing and forwarding because it's uh, I've been doing it for the last uh, 20 years or so. so I'll uh, quickly, there's so much to say when it comes to clearing and forwarding, but we'll make this, uh, I'll make it as easy and as simple as possible because uh, a lot of uh, the items are usually complex. All right, so basically, for those who are not very familiar with what exactly is clearing and forwarding, because I've stumbled upon people asking, what exactly is clearing and forwarding? When I tell them I'm a clearing and forwarding uh, uh, agent, or I, I run a clearing and forwarding business. Basically, clearing and forwarding is just somebody who provides a service on behalf of uh, whoever who is uh, importing or exporting goods. So they'll, make, they'll help you move your goods from one, as one side of the, whichever the country or the continent to another. That is, they connect you with the person who's transporting the goods, they help you with the, with the paperwork and ETC. So the definition is as simple as that. That's what a, a clearing and forwarding is. But then when you look at clearing and forwarding, you have two 
different kinds of people involved here. We have a clearing agent and a freight forwarder. Uh, most organizations uh, double as both. Like we offer both, uh, we are both clearing agents and freight forwarders. Occasionally you'll find some who say, I am only a freight forwarder, but they're in the business of clearing and forwarding. So basically a clearing agent is just somebody who's licensed to do all those customs declarations on behalf of the importers and exporters. So for them, they have to make sure that your paperwork is in order, uh, what is needed according to the customs regulations of the country that you're exporting the goods from and also importing the goods to. So it's very important that uh, you work with somebody who understands those things. Then now the freight forwarder, how the freight forwarder comes in is the one who will now provide the means of uh, transport. From the time they, they pick your cargo, whether it's from your warehouse, from your, from your house, if you're moving your personal effects, or from your supplier, wherever it is. Uh, even you know, I just want to know, can I put uh, post many times in a group or it is one day, one post? Like I was not very clear about it. Um, to parking, if you need parking, additional parking services. And also now some of them go ahead, like us, we do for you also the paperwork, the customs paperwork, and also getting for you insurance for your cargo. In case you've not taken up insurance, it's very important to take up insurance. So you have to be very clear and understand that you're dealing with either a clearing agent or a freight forwarder, or in the case of uh, most of us small business owners, we serve both as a clearing agent and a freight forwarder. So the freight forwarder is the one who connects you with whether it's the airline, the shipping line, the, the truck owner, and make sure that your goods arrive at destination. But uh, when you look at the history of clearing and forwarding, it dates back to way, way back. In fact, uh, one of the interesting things I learned is that how this started is the clearing and for, uh, the freight forwarders were just people who had hotels. So what they do, they would hold uh, their customers' uh, items, assuming somebody is traveling and they have so many things. Then they are after, or maybe they visited a town, uh, a town say mostly started in Europe and then North America. So they visit this town and they've bought a lot of things, but they still want to continue traveling. So they would leave their goods with the owner of the hotel, and then he would, he would forward them to the next destination they wanted it to go. So actually the first clearing and forwarding company was started in London in 1836 called Thomas and Middle. Naturally, they were using horse carriages. So transporting customer goods from one location to the other. This evolved as uh, business grew, uh, trains and steamships were with the technology advancements. There was a lot of trade in Europe and North America and, and that's where we are. If you fast forward today, we are looking at something that was once a very, very small cottage industry. This has transformed into one of the most, most dominant industries daily, and it continues to grow because uh, there is demand for the service. So again, the clearing and forwarding business has undergone a lot of uh, evolution in terms of uh, technology. From way back in the days, we started with mountains and mountains of paperwork. I remember when I started working about uh, 20 years ago, we used to handle huge files. Naturally, with technology advancement, computers, right, right nowadays we scan most of the paperwork. We no longer have to have so many filing cabinets, thank God. We just use hard drives or the cloud software. The internet makes it so easy to communicate from one continent to another in mobile phones. But at the end of the day, with all this advancement, the, the work and the goal of a clearing forwarding agent remains the same. It's to help a customer move an item from point A to point B. So I'll move on to the role of a clearing and forwarding agent in the international market. Ideally, what we do is just, we are the link between the owners of goods and owners of the means of transport. What I mean here is that uh, what we do is, you will tell me I have my goods to be picked up from Kwanzu in China. So I'll ask you, okay, uh, could you kindly give me your suppliers details so that you communicate with them, you find out whether the goods are ready. 
have they been inspected um, uh, what, what is the, the dimension of the goods what is the packaging like and then thereafter we arrange collection once we pick we ship it either by air or sea and then now once it arrives we clear the cargo for you and deliver it to you so literally we are just the link between you the owner of the goods and the person transporting the goods and uh, because of that the clearing and forwarding ag uh, agents facilitate uh, trade because you offer that background support. There's a lot happening worldwide. Like I normally say the world has become flat because of internet, because of mobile phone and all this technology. We're able to do so much growth of e-commerce. So for us clearing and forwarding agents, we are there at the back end, just making things happen. We're the ones who at the end of the day, you say uh, logistics is efficient or effective but who makes that happen? It's the clearing and, uh, and the forwarding agent. If your logistics is not going well, it means Saum and her team have messed up somewhere. Because once the supplier has given me the goods, what have I done or not done? So that to ensure your goods arrive on time, you do not have challenges in terms of paperwork, payments of taxes are paid uh, in good time and things like that. So those are the three key roles. But I'll move down to what exactly we actually do. So first things first, uh, when you uh, talk to a clearing agent, ideally, he's supposed to advise you on the customs regulations of the country that you're picking the goods from. Assuming, uh, let's say, for instance, for us, the Commonwealth business uh, ladies, I want to export my curios from, uh, from Kenya, uh, to the USA. So ideally what I'm supposed to tell you is what are the customs regulations? What are the paperwork that is required to handle uh, those items? And then which is the best uh, transport mode to, to transport your items? When I talk about best, it doesn't mean the cheapest or um, the fastest. Normally we usually ask uh, what's your budget? So we look at the optimal mode of transport. If you're in a hurry, then you have no choice but to use air. But air transport is usually expensive, especially for bulky items. If you're not in a hurry, we'll recommend that you use sea, sea transport. But then uh, you have to know it takes quite some time and, uh, and your goods have to be very well packaged. So those are the kind of advice that we offer to the customers. Thereafter, once we agree, we will book for you the space, whether it's with the aeroplane, whether it's with a, with a shipping line, whether it's with a trucking company, if you're transporting goods, mostly within East Africa, most guys use road transport or even within Nairobi to another city. We will book for you that space. Thereafter, we ask you to, should we, we come and collect your things or should we come and pack them, mark them and label them? Because at the end of the day, they have to be well packed. If you have sensitive goods, say like, uh, 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 curios, uh, like curios that are uh, fragile or even personal effects, like wall paintings, those have to be created and well packed and marked and indicated fragile, which side is up, which side is down. Those things have to really be factored in. Once we've done that, we move on to documentation and uh, customs clearance. When you talk about documentation, there's a lot that happens here. And it's upon you as the owner of those goods to make sure that you have given out all the documents that are required, number one. Number two is that your documents, like things like your parking list and the invoice are correct. Because if the declaration is wrong, it means you get into trouble when paying taxes. You get into trouble sometimes even when uh, uh, clearing now when the goods arrive on the other side. So you have to make sure that everything is correct. For me, I will check the documents as they are, but naturally what we do is ask questions. And I see sometimes customers get irritated when we ask many questions. But the reason we ask many questions is to make sure that the declaration is made correctly, the declaration is correct, uh, proper, and you pay the correct taxes. We do not want you to get into trouble by say Kenya Revenue Authority or Tanzania Revenue Authority or Uganda Revenue Authority because 
you did not use the correct tariff. A tariff code is a code that is given to all goods worldwide. And ideally the supply is supposed to give you the tariff code of the product you're buying. If you're not sure, you can always go online and check. The tariff code is what uh, enables us as clearing and forwarding agent to know what tax bracket your goods fall into and also uh, what are the requirements in terms of uh, <clears throat> in terms of even like packaging and ETC. So it's very important to have that tariff code proper. Goods are well described on, uh, on the commercial invoice. I know people ask what about uh, personal effects or household goods that are already used? How do I do that? We normally help customers uh, do an inventory list. And along the inventory list, you put estimate values. Sometimes not everybody knows the exact value of the goods that they have in their house. So you put estimate values against that list. And that is a value that will be used to declare your goods. Thereafter, you can, uh, we provide you with cargo insurance. This is normally optional. Some customers are used to hand, working with their own insurance company, so they will get it from the insurance company. But if need be, we will provide you with the cargo insurance. We work with a lot of insurance companies. We normally go for companies that uh, are known to handle cargo insurance in a proper manner. That is, if you have an issue, they resolve it very fast and also their rates are um, affordable and competitive. Apart from that, we will be updating you on the status of your shipment. I need to tell you, so even if I've picked your shipment from the supplier, I tell you I've picked your shipment from the supplier. I have booked it. It's going to leave uh, Amsterdam at this time, and I'll give you the flight number. Um, and I'll even give you, thanks to technology, you're able to track and trace your shipment online. And we'll tell you by when it's going to arrive, once it arrives, whether it's arriving where you are or to the other end of the continent, we will advise you on how long it will take to clear and when it's expected to be delivered to the destination that you have instructed us to deliver. So ideally, a good clearing and forwarding agent is supposed to give you the status of your shipment on a daily basis. Nowadays, there's no excuse not to update a customer because uh, we all operate on real time. Mobile phones, internet connectivity, and amazing uh, uh, different kinds of softwares that we use, it's important that a customer is updated every day. If your clearing and forwarding agent is not updating you on a frequent basis, then you have a cause to worry, but it's important to just have that discussion with them and agree from the onset. Once the goods are cleared, again, we will alert you and, and the clearing agent will tell you, we want to deliver your goods, confirm that you're delivering here at Samburu Girls High School and who is the contact person and we, we complete the process. And it's very important even after the goods have been delivered that they're unpacked immediately so that you check, are there any damages? And if there are any damages, you have to notify them in good time. Because if you stay with your goods for a bit too long, and then you notice damages, say after three months, this is specifically for people with personal effects, because they have a tendency to receive their goods and put them away and then unpack maybe after six months. When you come back to us after six months that your goods have been damaged, it's very hard for the insurance company to agree to compensate because a lot will have happened. We cannot be sure whether wherever you stored your goods, were they properly stored? Did somebody interfere with your storage and things like that? So make sure you check your goods that they have arrived, they are intact, they are not damaged. And if they're damaged, you just follow due procedure in uh, reporting. So with all that, there are some questions that you, it's important to ask when you're looking for a clearing and forwarding agent. First things first, before even you go out and look for a clearing agent, you need to ask yourself, where does my responsibility and liability of this cargo begin and end? Why, why I, I say you need to ask yourself that you need to understand is the responsibility of transporting the cargo from your supplier's warehouse to the clearing agent's warehouse, mine, the supplier's, or the clearing agents? How do you want to handle this? You may want to check with 
uh, both parties, the supplier, if they transported the goods for you, how much would it cost? Check with your clearing and forwarding agent. If they picked the goods for you, how much would it cost? Uh, like any other business person, I mean business, I look at uh, cutting my costs as much as possible. So it's important to ask yourself those questions so that you know how to handle uh, or work with your clearing and forwarding agent. Then ask yourself, what kind of service do I need? Do I need air freight service? Do I need a sea freight service? Do I just need a road freight service? Or can I just use a normal courier? Those are the questions you need to ask yourself. And that is based on the kind of goods that you have. Then you need to be very sure where the goods are being picked and where they're being dropped. If you call me to tell me that I have goods in uh, China that are coming to Kenya, that's not enough information for me to advise you. I'll need you to give me at least an address. If you don't know your supplier's exact address, tell me even if it's just Kwanzu. And the final destination, is it Nairobi? Is it Bungoma? Is it Mombasa? That's the, how I can advise you on how to go about it. Then what is the size and the value of my cargo? When you talk about size, you're talking about the weight. We are talking about the, the volume. When you talk about volume, because uh, in, in, in shipping, normally the, the cost of shipping is based on the volume of the goods. So you have to know, after my goods are packed, what is the volume? And you, by calculating the volume, for you to know the volume, you need to know the length, width, and height of the package. Then uh, whichever that is higher, if the, if the actual weight of the good or the volumetric weight is higher, that is what will be used for air freight. And um, how is my cargo package? Do I need any other additional packing? Assuming you have paintings, do you need them to be created? Uh, if you need them to be created, they are going to which country? Countries like uh, UK, US, Australia, that wood that is used for creating has to be fumigated and it has to come with a certificate. So those are things that you really have to be, uh, really know about. Packaging is very important at this point in time. You can always talk to your supplier. If you're not sure, you can research. And more so, you, now as you're going to look for a clearing and forwarding agent, you can ask them to advise you. The other thing is, is my cargo hazardous? When we say hazardous, hazardous are things like, uh, especially in the oil and gas industries, batteries and uh, stuff, liquid stuff. Like you all know, as you're traveling, you know, you're normally told there are things you cannot carry in your, in your bags, in your suitcase. So those are like hazardous cargo. So you need to understand that. And if you have hazardous cargo, there's some information that is required that you have to give to the clearing and agent. It's called a material safety and data sheet. That information is required by any shipper, whether it's by air, by sea, by road. So if you don't have that, you have to go back to the supplier of that kind of cargo to provide you with an MSDS report. And then, do I need any special license? For most suppliers, if I have sold to you something, I will naturally tell you, you may need a license to export or import that product. Assuming I'm bringing in uh, pharmaceuticals, you need a special license to bring in pharmaceuticals. Um, plant products, you need a special license. Pets, for those who move around with their cats, dogs, and rabbits, and whatever it is, you need a special license. So you need to know that. And also now, by the time you go to your clearing agent, you ask them, uh, can, you, can you help me in getting this license? Or if you're already conversant with the process, you can opt to do it yourself. And for some people even, the supplier can help you get the license. So as you're looking at, at uh, as you're choosing that clearing and forwarding agent, there are things you have to look out for. First, you have to understand your internal requirements and your cargo, just like I had said. Understanding your cargo is known. Is it hazardous? Is it normal cargo? Uh, what exactly do I need? What kind of budget am I looking at? Then ask this agent, can they handle multiple types of shipments? You may run to use uh, this agent because they are able to handle your shipment that is going by sea. If you're a trader, in the event you want cargo, say, from Vietnam, that has to urgently come by road. Can this uh, clearing and forwarding agent, sorry, by air, can this clearing and forwarding agent handle it or not? 
So it's important you work with somebody who can handle multiple types of shipments. Otherwise, you'll be forced to create very many uh, relationships just to, 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 to meet your business needs in terms of uh, uh, moving your cargo from point A to point B. Then do they have the experience that I need? Some, some type of cargo are very sensitive. I'll take, for example, uh, personal effects and pets. Not everybody understands how to handle them, especially when it comes to paperwork. And then pets are very sensitive. There's a way, there's, from the, the kind of carriers they you, you use for them, stopovers, if it's a long flight ETC. You do not want to work with an agent who has never handled something like pets to, to handle your, your, your pet, because you're not sure whether it will arrive alive. Uh, are you going to have challenges with the paperwork so that your pet is quarantined at destination and you have to pay additional fees for like another three months for keeping that pet on quarantine because you didn't follow paperwork. So ask them if they have any experience in that field so that you work with them. And the other thing is, is that clearing agent a member of any trade association or network? As clearing agents, I don't need to have an office in different cities. We belong in a network. The main network is called uh, FIATA, which started in 1926 in Switzerland. So within this network, we're able to work together and I can easily call another, uh, a partner agent in another city, say in Vietnam, and tell them, please speak for me, Susan Scargo from uh, this city and just uh, send it over by air. So if someone who belongs to a network means they are trustworthy, they meet the, the threshold for belonging to a network and you're within a safe space. An agent who doesn't belong to a network is very risky. What happens from my own personal experience is that they end up working with other briefcase agents, either for cost cutting measures or just trial and error. And at the end of the day, you find you incur a lot of unnecessary costs. Sometimes you even lose your cargo and it's very hard to trace it because they, they go missing in action. They are briefcase people. So make sure you work with an agent who belongs to an association or network. And then how will they manage your shipment, in, whether in terms of communication updates? Are they allocating you? Either way, you may call them a customer service agent, a logistics coordinator, or whatever it is. That has to come out clear so that you're not dealing with 10 people. It's important that you only deal with one person. Because if they leave you to deal with the person who handles uh, the, the driver when they're coming to pick your goods, then the person who's uh, handling the paperwork, the clerk, then again, now this other person updating you, then when they arrive again, the other clerk who's clearing, it's very confusing, it's very stressful and tiring. So make sure that your agent is able to allocate you one person who will be communicating to you, updating you on what's happening, picking documents for you and things like that. And then if you do not have your own cargo insurance, ask them if they can get for you cargo insurance. And naturally we all ask, who is their customer? Who are their referees? Uh, just find out. If they don't mind, you can actually call and confirm. Do they actually do business with whoever? Especially for us business people, you small business owners, when you're starting, you've put aside a lot of money. So you want to bring in things, say, from Malaysia. You do not want to, to take that risk and then your goods end up lost somewhere or they end up damaged. So you really, really have to be careful. Do not be swayed by low prices or one of those things that most people in different businesses do. Just do your homework and make sure you get it right. So for, I'll briefly talk about the basic documentation requirements when you're importing and exporting. So when you want to import goods, say I want to import uh, clothes from Turkey, what do I need? Even before you, you make that decision, it's very easy to know whether that business uh, is going to make sense or not. How? What you just need to do is uh, get a quote or a profile invoice from the supplier that you intend to buy the goods from. That quote or profile invoice, if you send it to a, a clearing and forwarding agent, they'll be able to tell you that this will be the cost of, of shipping these goods this will be the taxes, this will be the clearance charges, and they'll put for you a wholesome cost 
from the final cost, it's easy for you to decide, is it worth it to import those clothes from Turkey or not? So do not be in a rush. When you see things are very cheap in Dubai and Turkey, don't be in a rush to run and say, I can do this business. Get your information right, especially when it comes to the clearing and forwarding part, because that is where a lot of money goes. And you have to make sure so that when you're pricing your goods, you price them right. So the basic documentation that you need for imports is a quote or a performer invoice. You'll need an import declaration form. This form uh, is normally generated by your, your clearing and forwarding agent, and they will need the quote, of, the quote or performer invoice to do it. From that, uh, for goods that require permits, you also need a permit so that you can do the, we call it an IDF. I know a lot of you hear IDFs, IDF, that's an import declaration form. With the import declaration form, that helps you to get a certificate of conformity. Currently in Kenya, any goods that are coming in, you require a certificate of conformity, uh, which is, CABS are the ones who issue it. But what CABS has done, they have appointed agents in various parts of the world to issue the certificate of conformity. Your supplier can do that for you. Some suppliers are very familiar with that. If your supplier can't do it for you, your clearing and forwarding agent will do it for you. For us, we normally do it for our customers. We'll just contact the appointed agent in whichever country it is and ask them to arrange and go and inspect the cargo, confirm that they meet the standards as per the Kenya Bureau of Standards or Uganda Bureau of Standards or Rwanda Bureau of Standards. Then they issue the certificate of conformity. Once they have issued the certificate of conformity, we can now book the space for you. And to show proof that we booked the space, we'll give you a bill of lading if it's going by sea, an airway bill if it's going by air or a road consignment, not if it's going by road. And thereafter, these are accompanied now by the proper commercial invoice and parking list. This is used to generate what you call a customs entry slip. A customs entry slip is what you use to pay taxes. And as you're paying taxes, we normally use your PIN. So you have to make sure your PIN is activated on ITAX because activation sometimes can delay, especially if your goods have arrived on Friday and your PIN was not activated, you may have to wait until Monday for your PIN to be activated so that we will start the customs clearance process. And remember like air freight, we only have 48 free days of storage to before we, we are being charged storage at the, at, the, at the shed at the airport. If it's uh, sea freight again, we only have up to four or five days. So it's important that you have all your pin activated even before, by the time you start shipping, make sure your pin is activated. So it's good to have just this background information. I know your clearing and forwarding agent is supposed to ask you this, Sometimes they forget. It's important you know this. On the other hand, if you're exporting, say you're exporting French beans from uh, Kenya to somewhere in Europe, you still need a packing list and an invoice. For goods that have uh, made of wood, say like carvings or uh, packed in crates, you will need a certificate of fumigation for some countries, like I said, Australia, UK, and US. You'll also need permits, whether it's from CAFIS, if it's for the dogs, you get them from uh, veterinary, Kenya veterinary, and ETC. Then you will need a bill of lading once they've booked space for you for the, by sea, an airway bill by air and a road consignment, not by road. Then to pay taxes, we will generate an exporter entry and again, you have to make sure your PIN is activated. And um, ensure that it's good to always have cargo insurance because you never know anything can happen to your goods. Most of the time, damages occur. It's not deliberate. Uh, things just go wrong and it's better to be safe than sorry. So that's just a brief about clearing and forwarding and the paperwork required it is see. Um, but some interesting statistics and for you to understand that this, uh, this business is it's big and it's the backbone of world, uh, world business. So the global logistics market amounts to 5.5 trillion euros. Obviously with Asia Pacific uh, leading 
followed by North America, Europe, and then the rest of the world. Africa, we fall under the rest of the world. Unfortunately, our infrastructure is still not well developed for us to trade the way we wish to trade, but we are getting there. Now, uh, like Nigeria, South Africa, and Kenya are among the fastest growing markets in, in Africa. So we'll get there and probably have our own category and not rest of the world. Then uh, global logistics market size is 214 billion euros. The logistic industry cost and comes to up to $9.3 trillion. And the value of goods being traded is $17.6 trillion. The size of the clearing and forwarding market worldwide is 152 billion euros. And of course, the leading companies are FedEx, which is American. Air Freight is uh, DHL, which is German. Ocean Freight is Quen and Nagel, which is also German. So we can see the leading companies are still on the other side of the world. That is North America and Europe. So we are yet to get there as Africa. And the leading airport for international air freight is Hong Kong, because uh, a lot of uh, industries have moved their manufacturing sites to Asia. And uh, so there's a lot happening in the Asia Pacific uh, area. And uh, the top 20 guys are the ones who actually take up 50% of the market share. Of course, again, DHL, Penan Nagel, Dibishenka, DSB, Panalpina, and Expeditors Limited. Um, the rest of the 50% market share is just by the small players. But of, of late, there have been a lot of mergers and acquisitions. And so the top players continue to dominate that market. And so as we continue, the future of clearing and forwarding, of course, has is going on and it's growing bigger and better. There's a lot of digitalization with things like robots, advanced machine learning, of course, better con connectivity. It's easy for you to call me now. In the next few minutes, I'll tell you where exactly your cargo is, where exactly your pet is. It's on transit from uh, on Amsterdam, uh, awaiting for another three hours to proceed to the US. That's how it's grown. There's a lot of end-to-end -end logistics. So right now you can work with a clearing forwarding agent who will handle everything from you, from dealing with your supplier and making sure, even we actually push suppliers to, to make sure your goods are ready on time. We have customers who tell us, I have paid for goods, they are being manufactured in China. The supplier told me they'll be ready on 20th. Please coordinate for me. And he sits back and he'll relax. What I will do is now go to the supplier and keep asking him, are the goods ready? We are also planning for 20th so that they arrive uh, Mombasa or, or Nairobi by the fourth of the next month. So end-to-end -end logistics management. There's a lot of shift in international trade, mainly because there are a lot of free trade agreements, uh, a lot of e-commerce going on, like what we are seeing right now, even in the summit that is ongoing. A lot of infrastructure development, especially road and rail. Right now, we have there's increase even rail transport between uh, China and Europe. So all this, and then naturally sustainable logistics. Everybody is talking about sustainability, making the our environment better. So load optimization, meaning that you maximize on the space that is on the ship, on the truck, on the air freight, on the air or airplane. So that you 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 use uh, you, you you do fewer movements, then of reduction of carbon um, emissions. So that's where the future is, and um, that's it. Uh, so this is us, Duke Operate Logistics. We offer all those services that I have spoken about. I'm happy to take up uh, any questions that may arise. Thank you so much, Saum, for the presentation. And it's always good to see you. Yes, it's right. We always see you every Wednesday <laughs> during our sessions. And we're, we're very happy to get the positive feedback that you actually have marked that for your Wednesdays. Always happy to see you. Now, I liked how from the beginning um, it took us to where it started from and the evolution of clearing and forwarding to this point where there's a lot of digitalization in the same. So my first question would be, what are some of the like challenges or, or are there any problems 
that um, you face within your industry, even though we've we kind of moved to the digitalized era where things are, things are easier, it's easier to track things, it's easier to track the goods. So what, what are the challenges that you can mention? Uh, naturally, we still have challenges, especially in Africa. We are not 100% digitized. Kenya, we are 70%. A lot of, we still walk around with fires out there to get uh, now the government officials to approve some things, even though it's easy for them to click and just check, have I paid taxes? You still have to work with a receipt. Um, there's a lot of scanning that is done manually. You know, yet when you go to the global markets, scanning is done, is done electronically. So here, sometimes you have to actually call the customer to be there and the customs officer to remove goods from, to open the container, do the inspection, and that delays the process. Mm -hmm. So those are some of the challenges in terms of now the other players that we, we collaborate with in the industry. When I talk to, uh, when, I, when it comes to the owners of the goods, the challenges we have is insufficient paperwork. Like I said, make sure your paperwork is in order. When KRA comes to you that you did not pay your taxes for whatever reasons, for me as a clearing agent, I will not take responsibility because I use the paperwork that you gave me. So if you under declare your goods and then KRA catches up with you, I shall not be there. So please make sure that the information you give is correct. Number two, be very clear where you want your goods picked from and dropped. Do you want them to come to my warehouse? Are you coming to pick it from the airport once I'm done clearing? Mm -hmm. Whatever it is, as opposed to saying, oh, I thought your prices included you delivering it to my farm in wherever. So make sure that the information is complete correct and accurate and those are the challenges we experience right but what about um during this period with you know with the lockdowns and covid i mean since last year um a lot of businesses were affected um and, and it's not just you know not in kenya it's in, it's global the global economy was affected um has it how was it for you like being in this type of industry so naturally the buying power went down for everybody. So that means we have less people importing or exporting worldwide. Naturally for us, the business uh, has not done well for the, actually for the last two years, plus other things that came up. But that doesn't mean you stop looking out for other opportunities because now what is happening with COVID, when COVID-19 pandemic came in, like in Kenya, a lot of people lost their jobs. They shift their focus on agribusiness. So we have a lot of uh, agricultural exports coming up. I have a friend who's trying to put up a factory for avocados because there's demand, Fa factory for bananas because there's demand, factory for broccoli because there's demand. So opportunities, you lose here, opportunities come up, but when we are globally affected, everybody is affected and uh, you take it as it comes. But unfortunately for us, we had to lay off some people. Yeah. Right, right. Okay, so I can see we do not have any other questions at the moment. So what I'd like to do, I'll just like to quickly remind all the participants here on Zoom as well as Facebook, on what our chairperson introduced in terms of the events that we have ongoing and also coming up. So allow me to just quickly share my screen. Uh, sorry, okay. Um, I can see your sound, your screen is still on. Yes, please. All right, thank you, thank you. So let me just quickly share my screen and just remind all the participants on what our chairperson talked about. Um, so yes, she mentioned the Commonwealth e-marketplace, which was launched um, in April. So much going on. She's told us about the 65 categories of goods and services that have been put up. And there's, I think there are like more than 500 people, um, entrepreneurs, the women and the youth who've come to showcase their products. So there is the link, um, the link is at the bottom. 
but it's also posted on our website. I've shared our website, the link to our website on the chat box. And also if you follow us on Facebook, you'll get all the information on the same. And not forgetting, um, she's also told us about the inaugural Women's Entrepreneurship Summit, which was opened today. So much going on, so many events. And I know she's mentioned um, the heroin stories. Um, you need to listen to all those women entrepreneurs who are doing big things. So you still have time to join in. And once you join in and get it to the, the site, you're going to get the whole schedule. Continue to follow us um, on Twitter, this is the page, and also on Facebook. Send us an email for more information. Yes. There's a question on the chat. Maybe you can take yes. it before you close. We'll do, we'll do, yes. And I think, yeah, um, that is it for now. So let me just stop the share. And yes, there's a question from Catherine who says, uh, first of all, thank you very much for the presentation, very enlightening. So what is the procedure to follow if she receives damaged goods um, about, oh, let me see, damaged goods, the clearing agent tells me. Okay, and the clearing and agent, um, the clearing and forwarding agent tells her they were damaged at probably Hyde Airport by the customs officials while the officials were inspecting those particular goods. So what is she supposed to do? in such a case. Perhaps sorry, is... sorry, the question is actually damaged at the airport. Sorry for the typos. Dam all right, all right, thank you. Our thank airport you here, GKIA. yes, thank you. Yes, all right, thank you for clarifying that. Thank yes. you for the question. Thank you for the question. That happens sometimes, although some agents use it as an excuse for mishandling your cargo. So it's important to check, did, did you take up uh, cargo insurance by the time uh, you are procuring the services of that clearing and forwarding agent? If you did, then you can uh, do a claim with the insurance company. Unfortunately, if you did not take up cargo insurance, they will not, as a clearing and forwarding agent, it's very hard for them to take up liability. Unless you have this very long-term strong relationship then they may opt to, to refund you the value of the good, depending on how much damage has been done. And is it repairable? If not repairable, must they replace it? Then you start the process of uh, importing it from wherever it came from. But it's a very catch-22 situation to handle from my own personal experience. And that brings me back to the story about packaging. Always ensure your goods are well packaged. Yeah. All right, thank you so much, uh, Song, for that. Catherine, I hope that was um, very, very clear. Right, so we do not have any other questions uh, for now. So what I'm going to do is I would like to invite um, another member of the Commonwealth Business Women Network in Kenya's Programs and Trainings Committee who can just recap for us and also give a word of thanks as well as some closing remarks. Let me welcome Mweni Ndeleva. Mweni Karibu. Thank you very much, Susan. Thank you everybody for having attended today's forum. First of all, I would like to give my hearty word of thanks to the speaker of today's forum, which is really timely, just like the chair for Commonwealth Business Women Network has stated earlier on at the beginning. So thank you very much for the insights you presented to us, Saum Suraj. Uh, now we know better around the clearing and forwarding aspect of topic, especially with international trade. Thank you very much for that. I would also like to thank the members and non-members who have attended today's forum through the different platforms. Thank you very much for coming. We are glad to have you. I believe that we have all taken a lot from today's forum. We now know better. We need to have our documentation right, the um, right certificates, certificates of origin, the packing list. You will not pack French beans and say French beans. It needs to be um, a very well documented um, uh, packing list. So that is important for us to know. We also need to understand the documentation we need to have for us to have our documents 
I mean, our cargo reached the destination safely. And then most and most, the, the most important part is just to engage the right uh, clearing and forwarding agency. We don't want to engage a briefcase person who, when the cargo is here, the phone is either off, there's no one to contact, and there you're lost without knowing where to where or the cargo is at the port. So thank you very much for the information. We look forward to hosting all the members and the NAM members to our Wednesday forum next week. And we also encourage us to register. We have been given the, uh, the guidance by our chair earlier on and also by Susan. Thank you very much for coming. We look forward to having you again and again and again. Bye-bye. Over to you, Susan. All right. Thank you so much for, for the recap, um, Mweni. And also, yes, and also for the reminder on becoming a members and coming in and enjoying all these programs and events that we have going on. So yes, we have come to the end of our session and we'll be back again next week on Wednesday. We have not yet fully confirmed um, what we'll be talking about, but we should be able to do so by today, by end of day today. And we'll share the information on our website. Um, I have shared the link to the website and also we'll share the same on our Facebook page. So just be following that to know what we are going to be engaging in next week. Yes, lovely. It was lovely to see you all. It was lovely to host you all on Facebook as well as Zoom. And we hope to see you next week. And also a quick reminder, our, our chairperson said it at the beginning, let's continue to keep safe, wash our hands, put on our masks, sanitize, and you know, let's stay healthy and well. And we will see you all next week at the same time. Bye everybody. Bye-bye.